Welcome back to the Infinite Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Jeremy, and today we've got special guests in the house. First, let's go ahead and introduce Jake. What's up, man? How you doing? Doing all right. How are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, that's all I'm going to do, right, man? I'm yeah, going to go works. ahead and jump <laughs> yeah. right in. Uh, it is my uh, honor to introduce our guest for the night, the host of the Banal of America podcast, right? It's not what? a podcast? It's a podcast, so it's always, yeah, it's a podcast. Oh. Uh, Tim Banal, everybody. Right, right <laughs> What's going on? Hey, right hey. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Jake? Jeremy, good to, good to be on here. Right good on, to have man. you. Yeah, appreciate you coming in. So, uh, Tim. Yes. For all of our listeners who may not know who you are, mm -hmm. right? Real quick, like I said, host of the uh, uh, Banal of America podcast. And you're also an editor for the Coast to Coast AM website. News editor, yes. Yeah. News editor. How did you yeah. get that? Uh, well, my origin story is kind of long, but I'll give you the, the basic rundown. Uh, I graduated from Syracuse in 2001. And uh, where are you guys based out of, by the way? Uh, from Wisconsin, but I grew up in Connecticut. Oh, okay. And Jake? Yeah, from uh, we're down here in uh, Menominee, Wisconsin, but I'm from oh, nice. Northern California originally. Oh, nice, nice. Yep. So I graduated from Syracuse in 2001 um, and essentially wound up uh, needing a job. So uh, I took uh, – I studied TV and film, and I was planning on going off to California, um, TV, radio, and film. Um, but first I hung around in my town and got a job on the overnight uh, – as a janitor at my old high school, because I just needed to make some money. <clears throat> and then uh, wound up really getting, I had an interest in the paranormal growing up, but then I uh, kind of lost it just when I went to school and everything. And got out of school and was working on the overnight. Uh, it's like 2003 by now is when this all kind of came together. Um, and got really into the paranormal. Someone was like, oh, you should be listening to Art Bell. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And then I was like, oh, wow. So I got uh, started listening to Coast to Coast. Spent a couple of years just listening to Coast to Coast. Um, just absorbing it. Like, I, I like to say that was like my um, my undergrad, pretty much. Was just spent like several years just listening to Coast to Coast. So finally, about 2005, I was like, I really want to ask some questions to these people, but I can't really do it on my overnight job. So um, I'm going to start. I want, I'm going to interview them, essentially. I'm like, well, I can interview them. And this, I'm a big wrestling fan, so I was subscribed to a wrestling website at the time, and they had, like, news updates. And you would download them, and, and these files called MP3s. This is, like, new. <laughs> this is 2005. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a, um, a little splicer from Radio Shack and a digital recorder and record my phone calls with – these people, these uh, these mm. paranormal experts, essentially, and that that launched Banal of America Audio because there wasn't any podcast hadn't come along yet, so there was no such thing as a podcast yet. Um, so, so the show was just called Banal of America Audio. We've dropped we dropped the audio over the years eventually, but uh, so that was it. And then, uh, so as I was interviewing these people and stuff, uh, I was friendly with the folks at Coast to Coast. They brought me in to do fill-in website work for them. And then around 2000 and November 2015, um, so about 10 years into my podcasting career, they were like, uh, they wanted to expand to daytime content by, by way of news articles. So they brought me in as their news editor. And essentially, I've been doing that now for almost 10 years, um, where I write I'd say 90% of the articles. If you go to the Coast to Coast AM website, wow. you drop down articles as bylines for all my stuff. Um, but yeah, I write about 13 pieces a week for Coast to Coast, covering <laughs> everything that's happening in the world of the weird and the wondrous. Uh, uh, five days a week, Monday through Friday. So it's, uh, it's a full-time job. You know, I, I'm probably one of the hardest working people in the paranormal, not to pat myself too much on the back, <laughs> but it's like I do that. Five days yeah. a week, plus the podcast, um, you know, and I got to stay on top of everything happening in the world of paranormal all day, all the time, all the topics. So it's, Hell yeah, it's man. a pretty, yeah, it's exhausting, but it's, it's a pretty cool place to be, I mean, spot to be in. Absolutely. I, I know the listeners of the Infinite Rabbit Hole are, are definitely familiar with the Coast to Coast AM uh, articles because I share your stuff all the time. 
Oh, no, thanks, man. Thanks, um, thanks. Yeah, I, I've been recently doing a lot more on on the Facebook page, the Twitter, and and whatnot, or X, whatever it's called now. Uh, but I'm always sharing your stuff. And I, I do appreciate all the hard work you put in there because you got some great shit. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I take a lot of pride in finding like the really, really obscure uh, international stuff. Um, I think like last week we had stuff from like I want we had thirteen articles. I want to say there was probably a dozen different countries in there in the different articles. It was crazy. I was really like I finished the week and I was like, holy shit! It was like <laughs> Peru, Chile, uh, you know, uh, Japan, Mexico, Canada. It was like every country, like Britain. It was just crazy, crazy, crazy mixing different countries. I was like, wow, this really, this is a really international week here. And that's happening more often than not nowadays because I've kind of got a real handle for digging up these odd stories from odd corners of the world. Hell yeah, man. Uh, and then just the, the cherry on top is, I mean, you got, you're, you're now over, well over a thousand episodes of Vanilla America. You've been around for a long time. Yeah, well, I've been doing the show, uh, well, we took a hiatus, uh, sort of like, I want to say 2018 until really, like, last fall, but I started in 2005 doing Banal of America, and then, as I said, we, we ran for in chunks called, like, Seasons, about 33 episodes of Seasons. We did that for 10 seasons, which stretched out over 10 years, because, uh, after a while, I started to take longer time between shows, time between seasons. It just kind of became like, this is, you know, really tiring. And then by the time I got the full-time gig with Coast to Coast, it was really difficult to do both at once. So it was kind of like, I'm going to wrap up the show with season 10. So we did a big send off. Um, then I came back for a few holiday shows, tried to reboot the show. Well, then the pandemic hit. So I did like a 10 week spinoff kind of pandemic podcast during the pandemic. Um, then people were like, they were kind of pandemic. Now this is like the, right when the pandemic started. So it was like, uh, it was like, let's, let's do everyone's home. You know, I'm like, I'm interested in this story. It's like all anyone's talking about. So let's do a, let's do a pandemic podcast. Like, and that ran for 10 weeks and people were like, okay, by the time that was done, I think we finished up Memorial day, 2020 that weekend. And it was like, all right, people want, they want to hear me get back into paranormal. So we did a summer of strangeness that was like 10 shows planned to do a winter of weirdness. And then things that the wheels just kind of fell off because I've been using really using the same method that I had back in 2005, which was through the phone, through blog talk, I think was, yeah, but through blog talk, which is how we were doing the shows. Um, and it was just, it was just really like running on, you know, paper clips and duct tape. It was just like really, we tried to bring it back like in the spring of like 21, I think, or 22. And it was just like, the whole, like every episode was plagued, 22, yeah. And every episode was just like kind of plagued by these different technical problems. And I'm just like, you know, this isn't fun for me because it's too distracting trying to do the show with all these problems of things sound like shit or the guests are calling in on Skype and I'm on a regular phone and blog mm-hmm. talk is like, it just can't like put all this together. So finally at the urging of uh, Steve Berg, I don't know if you guys know Steve Berg, but he's uh, an actor, comedian, and also a paranormal, now a paranormal podcaster. He was like, yep. uh, we're really good friends. And he was like, uh, he was a huge, but all, I guess he still is a huge, but all of America fan. And he was like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta bring the show back. So finally, when he launched his show, I was like, "Look, all right, how the fuck? Like, if you just can launch this from scratch, it must be easier than I thought." And he was kind of just was like, "I use this site, I do it this way, I get the mic, you know." And so, pretty much was like, "All right, we're ready to go." And we relaunched the show in October, and I think uh, we're up to like thirty or so episodes. You know, I've been doing every week since uh, the very you know live, the last weekend in October. So it's been. You know, seven or eight months now. It's been great. It's been really fun to be back. So, yeah, I don't know if it's over a 1,000 because of the break, but it's certainly 500 shows probably at this point. I mean, certainly almost 20 years worth of shows. It's probably yeah. easier to do it that way. So, yeah, almost 20 years worth of, worth of shows. Metric yeah, shit ton. <laughs> Jeremy um, Pretty much. hit me up about scoring an interview with you, and he, uh, <laughs> he kind of showed me your – uh, I don't know, like a descriptor page on uh, Coast to Coast. Right. And I was like, I was like, 
he's like, oh, you want to be on this episode? I was like, you know, I'm not the paranormal guy, dude. I'm the cryptid guy. I don't, you know, and he's just like, no, just kind of just listen to some of his stuff. And so today, <laughs> I I literally listened to your show, the the revival, mm-hmm. uh, for ten hours straight. Oh wow! And I'm, I mean, I, I work on airplanes, and they're all in the hangar bay. And I I was setting up a oh, shit. It's still not even part of my my job really, but we just kind of have busy work. So I threw my earbud in. I was just listening to all your stuff. I sent him a screenshot of uh, <laughs> uh, the Page Daily episode because we yep. had a Loch Ness monster thing maybe yeah, a year yeah. or so ago where we were just crapped all over it. Talked about how fake it was, and I really liked her response and your your thing. We were like, well, what is it? And she's like. It's the Loch Ness monster. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen anything. And I was like, man, we gotta get this. We gotta get this lady on the show. <laughs> so I sent him this. So we're gonna be griefing all your, uh, all your, <laughs> stealing oh, all that's your, cool. no, your I don't uh, mind it. guests and stuff. But yeah, I was like, I, I shot him a, a message on Messenger, and I was like, dude, this guy's like the Joe Rogan, except really weird topics. I was like, I really like this. <laughs> now I haven't, I haven't listened to you long enough to find out what your your catchphrase is for Rogan. It's DMT and whoa. I, I don't know, you know, for you yet. But, uh, yeah. I got a few. I got, yeah. I got a, probably right, right, right. I use that a lot. Like, uh, <laughs> someone say something just to agree with them. I'll just be like, yeah, right, right, right. I got it. I got yeah. it. Kind of thing, but. but yeah, I'm, I'm really digging it. I like. <laughs> Thanks, man. Just Take it in the archive. Shit. You're going to like this tons of shit in there. If you like oh, for sure. cryptids and weird shit like that, you'll, you know, that's kind of always been my. I love cryptozoology, but that was my whole point of doing the show is to, like, do as wide a berth as possible of mm-hmm. topics. Oh, so sure. it's like, by the time I fit, but now where I'm at now, it's like, we've covered just about every story and topic you can think of in the paranormal. Like, uh, you know, uh, kind of not so much conspiracy realm, but some conspiracies like moon hoax and death yeah. hoaxes. I like to do mm, like yeah. weird oh, yeah. flat earth. Um, anything that's like a wacky kind of conspiracy theory. I like doing. I'm not like doing QAnon and shit, but, um, but yeah, but I always wanted to be like encyclopedic in a sense where sure. someone like you, Jake, who just found the show. Now you can go back and be like, all right, well, what, you know, what is the, I, we just, we do, we post our classic shows on um, YouTube and like, we just, right. a couple days ago, we just put on like a three hour Bermuda Triangle episode. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we got a, probably about a two, two hour plus episode on spontaneous human combustion. Um, mm, you know, nice. so it was kind of like uh, over the years as I was going along, I'm like, well, what, what haven't we done yet? It's like Amelia Earhart. We got to do Amelia Earhart. We got to <laughs> do, I think maybe I haven't done crop circles. That might be the only one I haven't really done a whole show on, which is, uh, I should like write that. I'll, I'll remember it, but I, that'll be one I should do soon ish, uh, right. crop circle episode. But yeah, that's, that's kind of the whole deal. So yeah, for anyone who's just discovering been all of America now, you're in for a treat because it's like you can go back and, check out these old shows that are that are chock full of all every different topic you can possibly think of nice oh, sure man. i was we, uh, threatening uh jeremy earlier because he i was talking about you and he's like oh well you're gonna get to hear him and i'll or talk to him tonight and i was like i was like wait just me are you gonna bail on me i was like i was like i swear <laughs> if you bail on me this is gonna be the first infinite rabbit hole episode focused entirely on the dmv <laughs> 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 Well, hell, man, we might be able to fill in one of those holes. We just landed a, a sweet gig with uh, Elmwood, the city of Elmwood in Wisconsin, to do a documentary yeah. and stuff for them. Uh, oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah, some pretty cool stuff there. Uh, speaking of your catalog, though, two two uh, episodes really stuck out to me. The one that I led to listen to today, I had to listen to Lauren Coleman. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually reached out to him, and he told me he didn't do podcasts, and I was like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh-huh. And and then you did our our good friend Asher's. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually am a co-host on her Beast and Beyond uh, podcast that she runs through the on Wednesdays. We talk. We are RS feed. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we talked about that when she was on the show. Um, yep. The be- the beasts, the beasts, like the spinoffs that she's doing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, she she uh, <laughs> tagged along with our injured cold coverage and uh i think that's what really did our podcast really well was was the, that series so we we uh we, we love astros here in the afternoon nice. yeah mm-hmm. she's real cool but um jake yeah. you got any more questions because i got i got a i got a banger no go for it cool all right tim so I, i'm sure you heard the news uh they're they're bringing back the las vegas alien 
uh, videos. What do you think? Yeah, about I've this? seen that. I saw that. Yeah. Um, I'm not really too impressed. Uh, this it kind of it, it. You know, all this stuff always sort of falls apart. So I'm waiting to see. Kind of like I think the guy who analyzes it says he'll put it up for peer review or whatever. So it's like, well, and maybe if somebody else looks at it, uh, I might give it a, a more serious look. Um, but to me, it's. Yeah, I, I, it's it's just weird that it's kind of come back all of a sudden um, after almost a year. Yeah, that's what I, I was talking to somebody today about that. And they're like, well, what, what are they trying to distract us from? And it's like, mm-hmm. man, I don't know. There's a 10-foot uh, alien with cloaking on, you know, like, you know, it's got to be something because it just came out of nowhere over a year later. Yeah, yeah. It's Well, I mean, I think part of it is like, I mean, we won't really know until more time goes by, but I think that report from Aero, AARO, um, mm-hmm. in January or February, where they were like, here it is, we didn't find anything. Um, it seemed to really take, it felt like it really took the wind out of the sails of the UFO subject, uh, especially like the super pro, you know, disclosure people. I call them UAP aficionados because that's, you know, that's what they want their thing yeah. to be so so and it differentiates it from what i prefer which is like old school ufology and flying saucers stan friedman the old timers who were kind of like a little more eccentrics now it's like government people and sort of a little more highfalutin characters that are sort of driving this ufo thing so it feels like a lot of the air went out of the balloon with that because i just don't feel the same buzz about UFOs that I did even uh, like a year or two ago. So, yeah, you know. They're, they're in their death throes, though. They're still trying. They're bringing Congress <laughs> in all the time. They're they're really trying to kickstart this. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely made it into a serious issue. And definitely Congress is involved sort of, uh, you know, there are some congressmen who are really into it. So it, it's, it's certainly being taken more seriously than it ever has in my uh, career looking at it. So... Um, it's interesting. I don't necessarily believe the government's going to say that it's aliens. So it's kind of, um, you know, to me, it's just kind of like, I think it's going to end up just kind of reaching a standstill. I mean, I don't, it just, yeah, Yeah. I don't don't really, uh, I don't really buy it that that, that the government's going to tell us. And I certainly like where they're like, oh, well, you got to release all the UFO documents. Like they're they're not going to find like one document that's like, oh, whoops, we, we forgot that there was a picture of a dead alien in this file that we were forced to release. It's like they got, if they know, if they have information and shit, the government, like, they got it on lockdown, dude. They're not, it's not like something that they, that you can accidentally get or force them to release. They'll just be oh, like, yeah. yeah, no, that part's not, that part, that's not, that, you know, it's that's filed under FUO. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's, they don't, <laughs> you know, oh, you don't get yeah. to see it. There's that. And then there's also the, the contracting portion of it, you submit a FOIA request to the U.S. government, and they're like, well, that's owned by Lockheed. I, I, right, exactly. <laughs> you're not going to yeah, get yeah. nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it's all compartmentalized and shit if it's even, you know, if we even have anything. That's like, I don't even necessarily believe, right. like, the government knows what the fuck's going on um, a lot of the time, most of the time, yeah. especially with UFOs. So it's like, ah, uh, they may be as confused as we are, and they just don't want to tell anybody that they don't really know what the deal is. That's probably the case. If if I had to put my money in anything, it's that they don't know shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, it would be fucking awesome. Like the old story of like Eisenhower meet an alien at the at the air at the air base, and like they cut a deal, even though it's a horrible deal. Like the aliens yeah. could abduct us and shit. It's like it, <laughs> that's a that's a great story. I'd be like fucking in a way. It was it would be awesome if it was true. It would be like wow, that's fucking crazy the government was cutting secret deals with the aliens like in the 40s but the other part's just like ah i don't know it's been so long that part of me's like uh this, this ought to have been cracked open by now if it, if it was what they say it is and what we think mm-hmm. it is you know what i mean like that it's aliens that are coming from another planet like uh you know i part of me just thinks uh, i think i think we'd kind of get to the bottom of this by now um there's been a lot of people working on it it's not like this is some new thing this is like the generations of people have been trying to figure this out so it's like oh maybe they all a lot of them seem to be working backwards from the answer is that these are aliens coming here so it's like oh maybe if you if we reverse the course of what we're looking at 
will get a better handle on this because uh, maybe it's not aliens. Because I've always uh, recently came to my attention just the science of it, where it's like if you, Jake or Jeremy, if you guys went to like Mars or whatever and got out of your little ship, like you would like be crushed or whatever, like by the gravity, mm-hmm. or you'd be all fucked up. Like <laughs> you just, you know. So to me, it's like, uh, if anything, it's like these beings or whatever. It's like they're probably fucking robots or something. How else could they function in our gravity and everything? <laughs> they're like, like how they're like blobfish at the yeah. depth of the ocean. They're fish, but you bring them up, they shoot up bubble gum. <laughs> yeah. Well, we we brought that up uh, multiple times. How, if anything, these things have to be drones, some some sort of uh, manufactured organic drone. Or yeah. you ask Jeff, and he says that you know extraterrestrial, extra terra on the other side of the ice oh, wall yeah. type. He's stuff, a flat earther, you know? though. They're that from here. Count. They're from the hollow earth type <laughs> stuff, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, that's a part. Yeah, no, I've heard that theory that like, yeah, they exist within the earth. So it's like, okay, well, that's a whole different. <laughs> that's a whole now. Then, then why the fuck would the government ever tell us that, dude? Like, they're not. They're, they're definitely not going to tell us. Oh, it turns out there's a whole civilization living under the planet, and it's like we can't even get along here in America, like much <laughs> less with anyone else on the planet. Like, oh, there's all these wars going on now. It's, it's like, like we oh, found great. a so now we found a new civilization, civilization under yeah. the ice, and we're going to start a nuclear holocaust with them. <laughs> right, right. We found there's a whole other civilization. They live secretly on the Earth. They're more advanced than us. It's like, yeah, that that won't fucking freak people out. You know, <laughs> I think the best case scenario is they go, look, we found some shit on Mars. We found some monuments. There's no one there. We can't find anybody else, but there's some monuments. So clearly, you know, intelligent beings exist out in the universe. They were around here at some point. Maybe they created us. We don't know. We don't know anything about them. All we know is... They existed and they're gone, so you don't have to worry about them coming <laughs> to hurt you or anything like that. They're not. There couldn't be any invasion because they're all gone. They must have died in some kind of disaster, and you know we need to be better to each other here on Earth to prevent that from happening here. That would be like the best thing that could happen. Um, I think that would be like the most, the safest because I like in this the pandemic was disclosure. That was the alien. That was the template. The pandemic. So it's like this outer force came we don't know what the deal is with this outside force it fucks you up um and and no one could you would think the whole idea was like oh the aliens would come and we'd all work together to fucking band off the alien and it's like no that didn't happen dude the alien came and we fought each (laughs) other over how to how to deal with the alien like we we, uh, we we self-destructed we self-destructed in the face of the alien we were like fuck you well what you gotta do with the alien is you gotta do this you're lying you know what you're talking about like whatever and it's like there's your there's your template for disclosure that's like why man, why they why i'm actually an almost an anti-disclosure advocate simply by that notion that it's like we can't fucking handle this dude we cannot we cannot handle the truth. I don't care what anyone says. Like you and I, the three of us, sure. We thought about this. We contemplated this. Yeah. Re- regular people who get their news from the news um, and don't think beyond that, or don't even watch the news. I know people that don't even fucking watch the news. Like, how do you like who have no connection to current events? Like they watch sports or TV shows and shit. But like, if you're like, well, what do you think? Uh, there's a big trial going on here, Massachusetts Karen Reed trial. I'm like a huge true crime buff. Um, you know, I asked for I don't know who that is. Like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, what do you think of how the election's shaping up? Because it's you know it's gonna be this. Real. I didn't, oh, is, it, is that what's happening? Is it gonna be those two again? It's like, how do you not know this shit? <laughs> so and there's tons uh, of people like this out there. Tons and tons of people. I'd say I'd say more, more than more than uh, half. Like the majority of people are probably kind of just tuned fucking out. I'm, yeah. On the alien to- topic, I'm curious what you thought about um, those fossilized, like, 
was it Peruvian or Mexican aliens that came out earlier this yeah, year? Yeah, those are fake. Because uh... <laughs> people were yeah. like, people were like, oh, but yeah, I mean, and also it's like, why, why would their heads be supporting their bodies and their backs up? That you die and your head goes down like this if you're laying on a flat surface, you moron. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, yeah. The the, I did an article about it, like around the start of the year. The Peruvian yeah. government seized mm. a couple other ones. Uh, last fall and then did tests on them and pretty much conclusively showed that they were like cobbled together like animal bones I think like mm. dolls they were dolls yeah. that were like yeah, yeah. had some it looked like the worst paper mache ever that was yeah. used yeah 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 <laughs> but they're like pissed about it the Peruvian mm. government and everything <laughs> they're like stop like you know it, it in some cases, well, they don't know about the other ones necessarily, but like the thing they show that they see is the airport looks exactly like the one for Mexico. So it's mm-hmm. like, okay, dude, this is probably like the same guy, the same whoever made the doll, like is the same dude. Otherwise, it's uncanny the resemblance. So they're just kind of like, hey, you're encouraging people to come to our country and take mm. shit essentially. So stop doing that. That's kind of their <laughs> their deal. Um, yeah. So. Well, I mean, I'm just thinking about like if that whole thing was a dry run for a, a, an abduction, we're completely fucked. We're so mean? fucked. The, what do you mean? We're talking about the uh, COVID years. Yeah. Yeah, we're fucked. No. fucked. Like, because he was talking. Yeah, yeah. About... No one could. Yeah, people would turn on each other and shit. It would just yeah. be like panic, you know, which is what it was like. Because like with the alien coming in, you know, you don't like at least with people kind of stuck at home, so they couldn't yeah. really fucking. <laughs> fight each other and shit. <laughs> it's like, if it's like, no, 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 you gotta like, you know, there's aliens and shit. Yeah, it would be, it would be ugly. Could you imagine that, that press conference? It's like, hey, so here's Dave. He's an alien and he's actually yeah. from a different dimension. Watch as he phases into existence. He comes into existence and you just see everybody, you know, 70% of the population, their brains are just going to melt through their fucking ears. I don't know, man. I think nearly all of the South would be like, but what does Dave taste like deep fried? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. They would, I've said it before. I would, if, it was, if it was done in a humane fashion, I would eat an alien. Why not? Oh, yeah. You got 100%. it. You got to try it if you can. Especially if so. they were like some squid monsters or something like that. Man, calamari all day. Right, yeah. right. Are, are, are there tags for Dave? <laughs> yeah, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff uh so what, what what did you think about the uh the miami mall stuff i thought that was all bullshit too it's, yeah. a lot of this big stuff that kind of gets big 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 is like mm-hmm. turns out to be garbage um yeah it was interesting how it spread i thought that was really interesting and just sort of like how you can't really these things take on a life of their own pretty much and yeah. It's just spreads like wildfire and TikTok's like the bane of my existence. And <laughs> it's like, uh, if shit gets going on TikTok, it like spreads like crazy. And it's often most of the information. I mean, I can't say that for sure. Cause I'm not on TikTok, but it sure seems like a lot of the information on TikTok is like bullshit or what's well, for clicks. Con- yeah. Like yeah. It's, that's for kids. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. For clicks. Oh, and yeah. for kids and for kids. So it's kids like young people clicks. like who are like, <laughs> yeah. I just found out about like, for example, like when you guys, you say you did like the injury cold up. So like someone could be like, they, they do 30, a 30 second version of yep. the fucking story. And it's like, yeah. I just heard the craziest story about this injured cold guy and like fucks up half the details or leaves a whole bunch mm-hmm. of yeah. Stuff and, out and everything, and then that goes all crazy, you know, spreads like crazy yeah. on TikTok, and it's like, oh Christ, like this yeah, is, and that that's how you, you get know. get a whole bunch of people thinking he's a a crazed grinning man that's gonna watch you sleep, and it's like, mm, well, did, you, <laughs> right, did, right. did you listen at all? You know, yeah, no, yeah, I get exactly. it. Exactly, fucking stupid. It's like yes, but also <laughs> no. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> No, uh, we we did an episode when that came out, and uh, we're still waiting on the trailer for Stranger Things. So I think we're going to see something there. You think it's connected <laughs> to the Stranger Things? Or you're making I don't a know. joke. I mean, we're both. like, we're like, it's such a big thing, you know. It's like, 
I lived in Southern California on, on military orders and there would be whole streets blocked off and all these like rice burner race cars sitting on the side of the road because they're doing a movie shoot. They didn't tell anybody about it type stuff. It's like, why aren't, they, why aren't, why aren't they filming a, a trailer for some movie or something like that or some movie shoot and all these people in their apartment complexes are, are, you know, above it are just like, oh my gosh, you know. Right. Well, that's the other part of it, though, too. Right. Isn't the, the only thing really is there's like one essentially like one video. Right. I mean, there, there weren't like right. tons of videos. Like if something happened at a mall, you would think like you would think there would be like 50 or 60 videos. You yeah. Know? I mean, like you see that when crazy shit happens on um, when real crazy shit happens, like it, it's not so great anymore on X because you can't fucking believe half the shit you see on mm. there now because the moderation is atrocious. But Back in the day, like something would happen and you would see like four or five videos pop up of the same thing from different people who were there. I don't mean paranormal per se, generally like shootings and shit. And like, yeah. that, you know, like, right. like, well, like they'd be like this cop attack this guy. Here's, you know, a person filmed it from there and another person was filming it over here. And it's like, oh, shit. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, still, I I don't know, just the the line of cars. I, I think it was our co-host Jeff that brought it up that you know could be potential uh, like a screen shoot for or a scene shoot for some fucking show. It very well could be, could yeah. be. I mean, because um, I got part of the, I guess the part that I don't necessarily believe is like this part where the people were like, yeah, we were in the mall and these aliens fucking were like, what, well, like right there? It's like. So, so there's like a dozen people there and an alien like walks through the mall and nobody thought to fucking even film it or take a picture of it. It's like all you have is that video of the of the huge line of cars and that does look yeah. really fucked. Yeah. But then it could be, but, but part of me, it could be a movie shoot and it also just could be like, <clears throat> I thought the theory was like they thought there was a shooting or something and it was mm-hmm. just like, they're so hair trigger with that stuff, rightfully so, with that yeah. stuff now yeah. that it's like if they thought there was an active shooter at the fucking mall, that yes, oh, yeah. what you would see. You would see a shitload of yeah, you know, and and maybe they maybe like somehow they thought that, but they didn't. It didn't get out to the wider public at the time where they were like, "Look, let's, let's get everybody get the fuck over the mall. Something happened, and yeah. not fucking a- aliens or whatever." And they all fucking swarmed swarmed them all. But it's that's just kind of thing. With there's so many witnesses, there should be better proof than whatever we saw. So clearly, it was like some. Someone took something and kind of was like spun it like and was like, it was an alien, dude. Look at this. Like, <laughs> yeah. They were like you were saying, like you were saying, Jeremy, like they filmed it out of their apartment window and they were like, uh, they made up the fucking story. And yeah. Keep, you know, then that guy, I don't even, I mean, I don't even know who originally filmed that first part. Yeah. So it's know. like, I don't think he ever came you know. forward. It's the one guy the first who didn't get a memo that they were shooting a movie. <laughs> and all the first-hand accounts, and they're all saying, oh, this is what we saw, this is what we saw. It all is parallel to the narrative. And then and then a couple of days later, they're like, ah, I was just lying, you know, just, right. for, just for the attention. And everyone's like, the government's making them say that. And it's just like, eh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. maybe this... they're getting too many follow-up questions, and they're just like, okay, you got me. <laughs> you know? Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. So uh, switch the subjects a little bit. Let's go back to the show. Um, how did you get into all this? What, what's your origin with uh, the strange and the unusual? Oh, I just really liked it as a kid, like uh, Unsolved Mysteries, especially like in the 80s um, and a little bit of sightings in the 90s, but then, then kind of just drifted out of it um, because really there wasn't. I graduated from high school in 97, so right before the X-Files kind of took off. Yeah. So it was kind of like, and, you know, when you're in high school, you kind of, uh, you know, I was only interested in really having a good time. So it's like I didn't really care about <laughs> chasing yeah, the mysteries of the universe. I was trying to <laughs> chase other things. Um, so it was like the, you know, I got out of it kind of like in my early teen years or whatever, and then. Like I said, I got out of college, 9-11 happened. I, mm. I kind of had a renewed interest in Bigfoot. I wanted to write a Bigfoot movie. It's like back when there weren't fucking a, a thousand Bigfoot movies. Um, and uh, so I got that. Then uh, I, I got Lauren Coleman's book, read that, read a few other Bigfoot books. And then Great really kind of like got me into the scene. The whole kicked it all off was Jim Mars' uh, Rule by Secrecy. Um, which I picked up and read like in one weekend. And then I 
I read Alien Agenda, his second book, and uh, those two kind of like just. I just took off after that. That was kind of like what really launched me into all this. I, then I started getting everything I could get my hands on. I'm guessing that's the Lauren Coleman book. Yeah. 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 It's yep. such such a good book. Such a fucking good book. You're in. You're it's in a great book. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I know Lauren real well. Yeah. He's a good dude. So uh, I've known it, Lauren for like 15 years. It's crazy now. <laughs> speaking of Bigfoot in New England, uh, Actually, I, I saw I saw mine in uh, Southern Vermont. Right you saw outside, Bigfoot right outside Brattleboro. Really? Yep. Wow. All right. Yep. How far is that from Whitehall? Uh, I want to say White. Uh, I don't know. I'm not familiar with where Whitehall is. I don't think it was the Beast. I mean, it, it could have been part of the. You know, no, I'm just wondering if it'd be like land. the same kind of terrain area. But yeah, wow, that's cool. So you, wow, a Bigfoot sighting. You're a very lucky man. Yeah, that's kind of what kicked it off for me. I can imagine. Yeah. I got called wow. a fucking loser my whole life because I, you know, and then I stopped saying what I saw and just kind of went along with, with life. And How then, old uh, were you when you saw the Bigfoot? Nine years old, man. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah. And what was it doing? I'm sure you've told this story a million times on the show or in other places, but what... what... Tell it again for the 15th uh, Yeah. Tell it yeah. again for me. I, I don't, you know, you can't say you saw a fucking Bigfoot and just, like, leave, leave me... Yeah, you know, well, especially like, so close oh, to your okay. home, man. Yeah, right in your right in your neighborhood there. Um, well, I'm not going to go into the whole thing. I'll just tell you the gist. What it was doing yeah. was it was walking off into the tree line of of a field with a deer over its shoulder. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, and it and the deer was screaming, man, and it just took that fucking thing's head and just smacked it up against the fucking tree. Wow, that's yeah. a very detailed, and colorful uh, <laughs> sighting. That's yeah. a good. That's a great sighting. That's like yeah. a, that's a little doubt that that's a Bigfoot kind of sighting. Very interesting. Yeah, I was. Uh, well, at nine years old, I thought I was a werewolf. That's the only thing I knew. Yeah, I didn't know it was a fucking. I didn't know what a Bigfoot was at nine years old, man. I, but that's, I a, that's a great point, then. That's a yeah. That's that's a good. Um, yeah, that adds yeah. some level of credence to the story. Yeah, because you weren't like, oh, uh, I saw a big. Yeah, interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah, man, I, I just, I remember, uh, I may Come or on, may tell not the whole story. I, I may or may not have pissed myself that day. <laughs> I would have pissed my pants. Yeah. I mean, you must've run away like screaming and shit. Right. I mean, I yeah. do that now. Yeah. You know, and I, I, uh, ah, man, <sighs> we, how far away about, was it from you? Uh, probably about 60, 80 yards. All right. Yeah. Well, you're far enough away that it wasn't like, yeah, but still, I'd be fucking scared. Yeah, Jesus. Well, it, it you by yourself? Yeah, all, all by myself, yeah. No, yeah, I assume this, so, this, yeah, yeah. The story was that I got a new scope for my BB gun, and I was being a boy, and I wanted to go shoot chipmunks and birds. And I went down to this field that my <laughs> – here it goes. Um, I went down to this field that my grandfather used to uh, mow down because it was, you know, his property. And yeah. uh, I'm putting out a little bit more information than I guess they've ever heard. But anyways, uh, and he hadn't mowed it down yet. It was in the springtime. Um, and I went down there. I was going to throw sticks out into the field to try to get some quail to, to pop up and try to peg a quail. Uh, and I saw this white tail sitting out in the, the middle of the field. And uh, so I, I put my scope on her ass. I was going to shoot her in the butt. Yeah. And then she was gone. So I dropped my gun. And uh, there it was, just walking off with this fucking thing in its arm. Jesus, there's, there's no way that it didn't know I was there. I mean, I was a nine year old boy. I didn't. I wasn't being fucking quiet. You know, right, right. Uh, I'm surprised it didn't scare the fucking the deer away. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. The, the, I don't. That's wanna, wild. I don't want to do that shit again. I tell Jake all the time. I said I'll I'll get another fucking sighting, but I want to be in a car or something. Well, <laughs> like, like my sighting when I was driving through Oklahoma, <laughs> barring a. a seven and a half foot tall Olympic athlete wearing a ghillie suit <laughs> running full <laughs> tilt through a field. <laughs> you know, I was, yeah. I was telling him I had to drive from, uh, from California, Wisconsin. I got out of the Navy and my wife was already in Wisconsin. She had moved a couple months before me and, um, I was put motorcycles in the trailer, was driving them across country. I was going through Oklahoma and, you know, eight hours of driving, you're just like scanning around everything and stuff like yeah. that, right? Just same semi trucks and me on the freeway all the way across. And 
I like I'm glancing into these fields where all these cows are. Just looking to my right, and I see this thing just hauling across this freaking field. Wow. And I'm like, I'm like, in a, in a 10 second span, I get a good few glances because there's trucks in front of me. They're trying to murder yeah, yeah. him, you know, getting in the fast lane, going around. Yeah, you gotta keep your stuff. eyes on the road. So I'm yeah. just like glancing, 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 and I'm like. I've been doing this podcast for three and a half years now, and I'm sitting here like, wait, really? I, I call up Jeremy, and I'm just like, I like, I think I just saw something, dude. And he's like, all right, we'll break it down. What did you see? And I was just like, all right. So I kind of give him the description. I was like, I was like, I, I saw this thing that was not a cow. It was upright, and it was yeah. running, right? And I was like, long strides, big, long strides. Yeah, yeah. And he was just like, all right, well, what could it? have been right and we just kind of break it down and we were talking for 25 minutes and i'm like i'm like all right so barring like an eight foot tall olympic athlete full yeah, yeah. tilt running wearing a ghillie suit <laughs> you know yeah 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 98 percent sure that it was a bigfoot and well they oklahoma, got a lot of bigfoot out there oklahoma's yeah. huge for that sort of stuff all the yeah. crop dusters and stuff say yeah you watch them break the tree line haul across the field and go into the next tree line you know all the time they're just hauling across these fields and stuff and so yeah. it's like oh cool jake didn't know that at the time i had to send him article after article and like dude you know <laughs> you're you're in bigfoot territory man that's that's yeah that's yeah. bigfoot country He's Jesus, like, where are you, you at? Send me... seen fucking Bigfoot. This He's like, wild. where are you at? Send me a screenshot. I mean, I'd rather have Jeremy's experience because then it would be like, no. you know, I'd be like, ah, no. yes, that's exactly what I saw versus being like, ah, it could have been a cow running on its hind legs, you know? Come on. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> they do yeah, that I, all I the know. time, I right? Think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's probably a black bear sprinting oh, on its hind legs. Of yeah, course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, that's to, wild. To answer your question from before, uh, Tim, an hour and 30 minutes away from Whitehall. By car. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So not, that's pretty not close, I think. In woods, in woods, you know. Yeah. Is yeah. that is that not is that ninety minute drive? Yeah. Yep. Okay, uh, so I bet it's actually closer in mileage, in like actual distance, because oh, uh, ninety yeah. minutes driving up there is like you're covering like sixty mi- actual miles. It's like a fucking nightmare of like yeah. back back roads and. Single lane highways and shit. I'm looking at the path that it would take because I just looked it up on right, right. maps and you know there's a big crescent to it. Uh, so yeah. by, by the way, the crow flies, uh, I'd say 50 miles. Yeah, so that's 50, probably like miles. in the same territory as that as the Bigfoot that are yeah. thought to be out there. I mean, it's yeah. pretty. Whitehall's pretty. I've been out there a few times, and it's you look around, and it's like I could see a Bigfoot living here. Like it's just mountains and just mm. not, you know, tree co- tons of tree covered mountains and shit. And it's like, well, you know, it's, it's the alpha predator of the area. I could see how it would, uh, it would do all right there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We had uh very, very early in the show, we had uh Kenny Irish on and he's, he's from up that way. Um, and he was kind of fr- breaking down the beast for, for me a, a little bit. Not, uh, yeah, you know, I, I had watched like the Monster Quest uh, episode on the Beast of Whitehall, and uh, that's pretty much as far as my knowledge went on the whole thing. Honestly, didn't even know I, w- when I first learned that Bigfoot was even a thing, which was like 12 or 13 years old. I was sitting at home uh, sick from school and, and I was I, I was watching in search of and they did that that Patterson Gimlin special. Yeah. Um, so I went into a whole bunch of, you know, trying to find whatever I could on, on Bigfoot, which wasn't much because I don't, I think the internet was like brand fucking new at the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but basically it just was, was that I found that it was pretty much a strictly Northwestern creature. And obviously throughout the years, I've learned that that wasn't fucking true. Um, right, right. Yeah. It seems to be. Yeah, seems to be like Pacific Northwest and some kind of like territory like in the New England, Pennsylvania, that kind of maybe some kind of corridor, um, yeah. you know, and I mean, they, it migrates. The best theory I've heard is it's like my, it's migratory, maybe. So it's like might always be on the fucking move. You know what I mean? Well, so I, I could actually, just do a loop around the country. I want to say it was in Lauren Coleman's book here that he had talked about uh, blueberry patches and how they migrate with blueberries. Um, oh, wow. And, that could be that, possible. Interesting. And I'll tell you one thing that this portion of Vermont had in the springtime was fucking blueberries. 
Yeah. Tons of them. Oh, yeah. All oh, fucking kinds of them. Um, you know, this makes me wonder, you know, as you said, you pretty much covered every category of thing you can through your yeah. years of podcasting and doing your show. So whether it's cryptozoology or paranormal or aliens or whatever the thing is, what are the things that you really put more of your, I don't want to say faith, but more of your like, yeah, this probably exists through the amount of researchers you've had, you know, is it ghosts, aliens, you know, specific oh, crypt, cryptids um, or something like that? I like to hope that Bigfoot's real. So, I mean, I think, sure. I think that that's, I still hold out hope that there's something to that. Um, but I can't really stake like, you know, I, I, right. So maybe like the Orang Pendek is a particularly uh, intriguing creature that like lives um, Sumatra in these jungles that mm -hmm. haven't, uh, you know, been touched by human civilization. Um, and they've been seen by native villagers and stuff there, uh, but certainly not all the time. They're super elusive. They're like a little bipedal mm -hmm. um, ape, essentially, like a, yeah. like a bipedal. Uh, yeah like a little mini Bigfoot. So I think that one I mean, seems more uh, certainly like the kind of thing that if it happened tomorrow and they said they found one, I'd, I'd believe it. I'd be like, Oh, okay. That doesn't, that doesn't stun me. You know what I mean? I'd be like, sure. Oh wow. Okay. They so they finally got that. The RN Pendek, you know, but yeah, I suppose, yeah, yeah it's, uh, but yeah, I mean, I kind of, I hope for the best with all this stuff. I don't say ghosts. I just believe in, but I think they're just kind of like, like, almost meteorological or something not that they are but that's just yeah. kind of how i feel about it. it's like it's a part of our universe i don't understand it it's like if you ask me to explain a fucking cloud i couldn't tell you how a cloud works <laughs> honestly and look i went to syracuse i say tv radio and film what do you want from me i don't know how a fucking cloud works. <laughs> so it's a but ghosts are like clouds to me they're just like they happen there's so they exist there's something to it yeah um but we don't really know how it happens or what it even fucking means. Um, you know, so that's, yeah, that, I, I've reached that point in my life with, uh, <laughs> with ghosts and sort of the, the, yeah. the afterlife type stuff. And even like weird powers or whatever, like telepathy or mind reading mm -hmm. or psychic stuff. It's like, there's clearly something to this, um, but how it works and why it works and all that is that's why, you know, we're still all kind of interested in it. Um, you know, I think it was your episode with uh, James A. Willis. I'm pretty sure I listened to it today, where he really hit the nail on the head for me as far as why I give zero like weight in ghost existence, and it was just him crapping all over all the Ghost Hunter TV shows. Yeah, where they're yeah, like well, they're, they're constantly bad. looking, they're never finding anything. It's all this nonsense. All the equipment they use is baloney. You know, all this right, sort right. of stuff. He's breaking it all down. It's just a crappy radio. You know, all their spirit boxes and stuff. They're picking up a yeah, DJ. Yeah. You know, all this sort of stuff. And I was like, man, I I give no credence to any of that stuff because of how dumb those shows are. Because I just laugh at them. My wife's like, oh, do you see this one? I was like, no, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, so to, it was kind of, really good. To kind of fill you in, Tim, a little bit about our show. We have four guys and we all have different points of view on all this stuff and you Bigfoot just have sightings to the other two guys have bigfoot sightings no, too is this no. Kind of... okay no so, <laughs> so what have... the fuck's going on <laughs> yeah. no so uh jeff is is your tinfoil hat conspiracy fucking crazy dude uh okay love him to death uh, cj is your your hauntings your spirits your occult your mysticism okay. and that kind of stuff jake's your skeptic uh, there you go. And he also looks through everything at everything through a, a Christian point of view. And I just love oh, fucking all those monsters. aliens are definitely demons, you know. <laughs> just like, there's no way. Um, there's dimensionals if you want to call them. Well, that. I wouldn't put much <laughs> too much credence in in uh, you know in fucking any of this ghost hunting show stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, well, especially any of that equipment and stuff. It's, it's like, for entertainment, yeah. Yeah, but I think everybody. I mean, most people have some kind of. Either they've had an experience or they know someone who's had an experience, someone they really trust, you know, who, who they know wouldn't put them on. Yeah. That my... Has had some kind of weird ghostly thing. And it's just, it's a weird, there's a weird naturalness to it. That's not 
you know, or it's just like, oh, my grandma died. And then the next day, yeah. like I smelled her perfume, like, like a month later. So it wouldn't right. have been, you know, mm-hmm. like, like a, a year later, like I smelled her. Perfume. It's like, where the fuck did that, you know, but maybe that's just the brain. Maybe the brain, maybe you're having a fucking stroke, right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe like all burnt toast all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like maybe, maybe. Yeah. So, but there's just all those weird, little weird shit, little weird coincidences are really kind of like, you know, spooky, and I think that they they mean something. My my mom, I want to get her on the show, but yeah, I mean, Christian lady, you know, even me as a Christian guy, I don't I believe you go two places when you die, right? And uh, but even still, you know, she was a an Air Force brat. Her uh, her dad, my grandpa, was was in the Air Force for twenty six years. They did some time in England. One of the houses they lived on base in England. The Woman went crazy, killed her kids, hung herself off the banister oh, type stuff. Yeah. And when they moved into that house, because it's not like they're going to demolish it. It's base housing, right? They're like, keep it up right. for forever until it's condemned. But they move into this house, and she says it was all kinds of stuff. She would get pushed down the stairs. The The stove would turn on in the middle of the Jesus. night. And, like, you know, uh, towels would get thrown on top of the flames. All sorts of crazies would constantly happen. Then one day, Grandpa comes inside after work. Grandma, you know, classic, you know, old school housewife had just been home with the kids all day long. And she's like, all this craziness is going on. They've been dealing with it for months. And he walks right into the front door and he says, if you don't knock this effing stuff off, I'm going to burn this house to the ground. And everything stops. Wow. They lived in that house for another year and everything was done. And then they, he got orders back to the States. They moved away. Um, She was five at the time but she remembers all this craziness going on and um grandma and grandpa took a trip you know years later you know 20 years later to go back to england you know he's out of the military they want to go on this you know hey wedding anniversary trip around let's go back to the old place so they went back to the base he gets on on base and they sure enough the house is still there right you know some of these buildings on these bases 100 years old plus right yeah, it's still got yeah. asbestos and lead paint who cares but <laughs> so they go to this <laughs> house and and they they walk right up to the front door and they they ring the doorbell and they're like hey you know we used to live here so many years ago all this sort of stuff is she still here and their faces went white and they're like you know about her and they're like yeah Wow. You know, and uh-huh. and she's like just a fucking like, movie. She's just like, <laughs> Make I don't know. A movie, dude. And my mom's like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I don't believe in ghosts, but there was something crazy there. There was all kinds <laughs> wow. of violence in that household and something <clears throat> wild was going on there. And it, it went, you know, for years and years and years. And it's just like, I don't know, you know, wild. But then you try to get into any like, oh, well, what are ghosts? And then you get into the ghost hunting shows and you just, you know. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're just, they are just for entertainment. They're yeah. not really, uh, Someone ripped the fart next to someone else. Like, I smell sulfur, you know. It's like, <laughs> oh, no. Weird. Right, right. Well, to yeah. like extend the analogy, like the ghost hunting shows are like if you were watching fucking people lying in a field pointing up at the clouds and being like, that's a, that's a whatever, you know, trying yeah. to make, you know, look, that looks like a thing it's a it's trying to tell me something and it's like oh man it's just a natural thing that's happening you gotta just kind of you know look at it that way maybe and take a different view of it the yeah ghost sure. hunters i mean i guess you know it's yeah, like, yeah. right trying, running around with equipment and shit it's like uh, I but know. i mean that's like everything too you get the the bigfoot hunters too i mean i don't know i saw a meme a year ago and it was so funny they're like all these ghosts or uh, or Bigfoot hunters, they're out in the woods doing Bigfoot mating calls. Like, what are they going to do when that thing breaks the tree line full <laughs> tilt, ready to yeah, go? Yeah. Like, oh, no. <laughs> you know? Right, right. No, no, no. <laughs> you, get, you get your answer if it's a red rocket or not. Yeah. yeah. For uh, science. Fo- <laughs> for science. Uh, follow-up question from what Jake asked you. Um, have you ever had a guest come on that just completely changed your mind on something? Uh, shit. I don't know. I mean, my mind, I mean, just made me kind of think more about different subjects, I guess. I can't think of anything where I was like, oh, I believe X, and then this guy came on and convinced me of Y. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, I was joking around with this on the show the other night. It was like, uh, I did do a show that was about uh, this guy believes that his whole shtick was that uh, meat uh, horses eat meat, 
And it nice. was like, he had all these cases of meat eating horses and, um, and I suppose that changed my mind because I just, but I hadn't really even considered it. So it's more just like, oh, I, you know, I just thought that they ate regular grain and shit, but apparently he's like, you know, they also eat meat and, you know, he argued for the case and why, you know, the powers that be don't want you to know this for like, why exactly? I don't know, but it's, uh, yeah. So that, that was kind of one of the more odd questions uh <laughs> or guests that, that i had that i was like oh, okay well i never really thought about it like he said that on the show i'm like well you've kind of convinced me dude because i don't i didn't really have a take on it originally i'm not yeah. super like oh fuck you fuck you where you get off that horses <laughs> could eat meat like apparently people reacted to that like that way not uh, with the show but just like with to this guy so it's like no, I mean, if you're all right, if you say so, dude. I mean, so it makes sense to me if you have all these incident reports and cases and shit of horses eating or biting people and sort of uh, taking chunks out of them, eating animals and shit. So, I, yeah. uh, my it's high a school, we had, a, we had an ag program because it's uh, California, right? A lot of agriculture over there. And yeah, I had a buddy that was raising a, a black Angus steer and he fed it beef jerky once a week. I watched him do it. And I, he's yeah. like, kind of messed up, huh? I was like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I yeah. had it right too. And I was like, all right, dude. <laughs> okay. It's fucking messed up, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you got any projects coming up? Uh, even... Yes and no. We got Penal of America, obviously. Um, show's going to keep going for a while at uh, Penal of America, YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple, all that. Uh, just put in Penal of America. Obviously, Coast to Coast. Uh, I got a few trips in the works. Um, the big one I should plug is Strange Realities Conference. That'll be in Nashville in November, uh, so people can check that out. I couldn't tell you what I'm going to be speaking about, but if it... If you're looking for a good time, you, you, this is, uh, you know, it's kind of like we're, we've been turning it into like the paranormal party of the year. So we're hoping more people come uh, this year, too. But it's like me, Steve Berg, Josh Cutchin, the folks from the Conspiracy Normal podcast are the folks who put on the event. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's Nashville, baby. It's it's, <laughs> you know, the whole vibe is is sort of like. You get that vibe from the event. Super low key. It's held at a recording studio in Nashville, mm-hmm. and um, you can you get it's BYOB essentially. You bring your beers. There's a fridge in the back. It's just super laid back. Um, we're talking about maybe grilling this year, which would be fucking really cool um, if we can get that you know, the thumbs up on that. We might be doing some grilling. So it's like a it's like a paranormal conference meets a little bit of a tailgate party meets kind of like oh, a, yeah. a, a little awesome. hootenanny kind of Nashvilleian, uh, you know, scene. So uh, I highly recommend it. I've had a blast every year. People have a blast all the time every year they come. We hang out in the parking lot, like uh, like at the hotel, <laughs> late till late at night, till mm-hmm. they pr- pretty much are like, "You guys got to get out of here" or something. <laughs> so it's it's a it's a huge. It's a huge gathering, and it's really kind of uh, very uh, just, just hang-centric more than anything. It's like the presentations are great and awesome and everything, but the, really the, there's a lot of downtime where people can do cool shit. So it's uh, last year, the folks of us who stayed past to Sunday that night, maybe like 20 of us, most of the speakers, good amount of the attendees, anyone who really kind of had heard about it, well, went out to the Bell Witch Cave and did like a whole walkthrough of the Bell Witch Cave at night, oh, tour, which was really awesome. Yeah. And it was surreal because I'm in there with some of my best friends and some of these various people from the paranormal. It's just so weird because I talk to him on the phone all the time and stuff. And here we are. It's me and Berg and Kutch and Adam Sane and, and Kiki Dombrowski and uh, Recluse, Steven Snyder. And we're all down in the fucking Bell Witch Cave. Um wandering around and, and getting creeped out and shit. And it was, it was awesome. So that's, <laughs> I can't say I'll stay in through Sunday again this year. If, if there's a groundswell, maybe we'll do another trip up to the Bell Witch Cave, but either way, people should come. They can go to the fucking Bell Witch Cave. I'm maybe it's like right an hour from <laughs> Nashville. Uh, and they, they maybe do a night tours that, that weekend. So strange realities, Check it out. And, uh, 
Nah, that's about it for me, really. I'll be up in Whitehall hanging out um, at the end of September for their Bigfoot conference. And I'll be, uh, uh, I'm just hanging out. I don't, I'm not a part of it. I just go, I'm a huge booster of it. So, and then uh, the folks at Paranormal 5 are putting on a ghost hunt that night at unaffiliated with the conference. It's a great thing of timing um, about an mm. hour away near the city in Vermont where I'll be staying Rutland. Um, I don't know, you know, Brattleboro, maybe, you know, Rutland. So I stay I in do. Rutland. I drive out to Whitehall, which is half hour away. I go to the festival I'm coming back and I'm doing the ghost hunt. And anyone can fucking do that. Cause uh, like I said, I'm not affiliated. Like no one's paying me. I have to buy tickets mm. to these things. The, the Whitehall festival is free. So it's, that's fine. But it's like, yeah. So, you know, Go check out Paranormal Five. I forget Wilson Castle Ghost Hunt. If you're if you're in the area, if you're gonna go out to the Whitehall event, um, go to the fucking haunting afterwards because um, it'll uh, the ghost hunt because uh, mm-hmm. it'll be cool. So that's it. But now that the show's back, it's been back for like eight months. Starting to like think of like it's been revived essentially. So now mm-hmm. it's kind of like okay, what what do you, what do I want to do next? Where do I want to take this to a different level? Um, now that I've been sort of doing this for six to eight months. So that I'm kind of, but I can't say anything for sure right now, but that's, it's been percolating in my mind lately. Like, all right, where, where am I going to take this next, uh, to the next level? So yeah, something we'll probably have some news in that regard, like maybe at the end of the summer or something like that. I have no idea, but, and, and coast to coast AM of course is the website where you can find all the articles that I write, uh, every day. So yeah, so lots awesome. of stuff from, but all. That's so fucking cool. Awesome. I mean, like, like, like you said, yeah, coast to coast was my gateway drug <sighs> to all this shit. I mean, it's it, fantastic, it, man. It's an institution. I, I yeah. love the place. What can love, I say? <laughs> love, huge fan of George Nori. Just such, such a fucking awesome guy. He's great. Uh, uh, Connie Willis is good. You know, any anybody that they have in there is just fucking phenomenal right now. Uh, to kind of dig into some of your. Uh, your 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 past explorations if you will mm-hmm. uh you know uh long time listeners in the infinite rabbit hole we jumped into the berkshire ufo incident uh and you actually went and did some research into the bridgewater triangle uh how was that yeah like? yeah a long time ago uh a long long time ago um that was like 15 years ago I went with Chris Belzano. I don't know if you know that that his name, but he wrote Dark Woods about the Freetown State Forest. Uh, he used to live up here. He ended up moving down to Florida, uh, like shit, maybe over a decade ago, probably now. Um, and we we went. It's a difficult place to explore the Bridgewater Triangle. It's I'm not a huge fan, to be quite honest. It's kind of like it's a whole amalgamation of stories. Like when people come to visit me and they uh, like, if they go, Oh, I want to see the Bridgewater triangle. I'm like, no, 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 you know, it's, it's like just, just a giant swamp. It's a, it's a, one place is like a uh, horse race track that somebody saw a black Panther once. Um, there's some native American stuff there. That's like in Freetown state forest. Like you can walk in there and kind of check it out, but it's like, this really, it's all spread out and it's all anecdotal sort of like, tales so if somebody comes to visit and you're like let's go you know you take them this is the racetrack where the guy saw the thing it's like it can get kind of <laughs> but anyway so we, <laughs> we did do that chris took me out to show me but the odd part was is that we we uh we're like out in the field and there's a dirt road down, run down the field and he went to try a three-point turn on the field and fucking like got his car stuck so we were like stuck in this field, in Bridgewater Triangle, for like two hours while he waited for, uh, while he waited for AAA to come and like yank his car out of the out of the off the road, you know, he mm. fucked up the turn. I think that's up. What went down? He would refresh my memory <laughs> if he was here, but I think that. So it was just a nightmare. It was kind of like, <laughs> and to me, it was like, all right, maybe that's that was kind of. I was writing an article for the coast to coast. They had a newsletter at the time, like a magazine. So I was writing an article for their magazine about the Bridgewater triangle. That was the whole point of driving down there with Chris. And so kind of was, that was, I don't know. It, it's, I guess it, 
in one way, it's like, oh, you're just trying to make it sound interesting in a way. Like, like you just try to, like, but maybe it, part of me was just like, that's, maybe that's the fucking weirdness of it. Maybe that was it. Like, I was trying to, I was trying to, like, look around this place and get to the bottom of it to write about it for a magazine. And it was like, no, that's not fucking happening. So mm. you're, you're going to just stay here in the dirt road for a while uh, and not see, like, half the shit you were going to check out. So it's very, <laughs> it was kind of weird. You know what I mean? It was just yeah. kind of weird. Like, don't often find myself in situations where the car breaks down kind of things mm. and I'm stuck for a long time, like in that regard, some unexpected situations like that. So, yeah, but that was the, that was my Bridgewater Triangle exploration. Uh, it's a little bit south of me. It's about 90 minutes south. I mean, an hour or so. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's not too, it's more of a pain in the ass for me to kind of go down there. I don't drive all that much, so I fucking have to organize, you know, orchestrate these things. But I'm more of a, I'm more of a America Stonehenge fan because that's about a half hour north of me. Oh, wow. but I'm also a huge, like, kind of... I like it as our roadside attraction, but it's not really particularly, like, thrilling, because uh, I've been there, like, a million times, so it's like, ah, uh, you know. But if someone comes to visit, that's where I generally take them, because... That's rad. Right on, man. It's got at least kind of a weird... It was been on in search of a long time ago, I guess. So. Yep, sure was. Um, Last one, man. Uh, Oak Island. Oh, I love Oak Island. Do how'd you? How'd you find all this old shit? Uh, yeah, how'd you find all this old shit that I did? Uh, That's pretty awesome. I can't give away my sources. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Google. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right, Page you must have like, found, an old, found an old bio that I had written a long time ago. Yeah, so I, I've i been on Oak Island. I've uh, explored Oak Island. I, I was lucky enough... Uh, this was also very long ago. Like you're bringing up a lot of deep cut shit that was like from 2000 and like five, six, seven. This was 2007 that I went up there. So now we're, that's 15 years ago. So uh, I went up to Nova Scotia to visit my friend, filmmaker, Paul Kimball. He's a, he's a TV ghost hunter now, actually. He started at UFOs and now he's a TV ghost hunter. So I'm sure he'll appreciate your, your <laughs> critique, Jake. <laughs> anyway. It just so happens, very lucky kind of turn of events. Um, this is kind of the opposite of the uh, Bridgewater Triangle thing. I don't even know if I knew this was happening the weekend I was up there, but as as it happened, it was a... Oh, I did, because Paul, I think, was speaking there or filming something, but um, there was an like Oak Island conference, and it was held, like, at the town next to Oak Island, and uh, there's a... I don't know what you call it, a breezeway? No, I don't know. What, what's it called? This, like a man-made road out to an island. A bridge? I guess. <laughs> I thought there was a more technical term for it. Like, yeah, like a I dirt mean, road. Like it was like a dirt, like somehow they had just dumped a bunch of dirt to get out to oh, the yeah. island. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just kind of heavy or something. When I when I was stationed in right. Pax River, we went down to uh, Key West, and there was there's a couple of those down there. Right, you get what yeah. I'm saying. I don't know what they're called. Yeah. They must have. They have a. I'm sure they have some. Yeah, but bridge is perfectly fine. It's <laughs> more accurate. So there is a road bridge like that uh, goes out to Rock Island. Now you can't go there at the time, but for this weekend, this is the lucky break of it all. So it was like if I had been gone to Canada, if you went to Canada any other time, you couldn't. You could drive out there, but I think they were like that's before the TV show. So they were. Uh, the Laganas had just bought Oak Island. Um, and so this was way before they even thought of doing a TV show. They, this was like right after they bought it. I think this, I don't know if it was their doing, uh, the, the conference, but it was really small, low key, little Canadian town, maybe like 50 people at the thing. It was awesome. It was very informative, very unique experience. Then you could go out to Oak Island on, you know, with unfettered and not, you know, uh, allow you're allowed. Um, cause otherwise, I don't know. I think they would call the cops or like, or maybe the gate was to the island was probably locked. I think maybe so you couldn't drive out there. Yeah. There was a gate and everything. So you're allowed out there. So we went out there and like looked around, saw it. Oh, and we could, we could, I don't know how familiar you are with the story, but we could, yeah. I haven't thought about this in years, but there's a pit. <laughs> yep. Where people a died and shit. And, and you, 
a pick can ne- that can never be uh, completely excavated. And you could go up and look down into the pit. So it was a real... Now that I think about it, it was really kind of like a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Because then, shortly thereafter, I met the Laganas uh, at a hotel. We went to the ho- nearby hotel to get a drink after. And we were just sitting on the patio. And they were out there. I just, like, shook... I, they weren't celebrities or anything like that. They were just, like, a bunch of rich guys from Michigan who had bought who had just bought Oak Island. So I just said, hey, you know, congrats and everything. And, um... You know, it's just sort of a real short, friendly conversation, but nothing like, nothing of, of substance. So, mm. don't worry. Yeah. Jamie. Next thing I know, a few years later, seven or eight years later, I see they they started a TV show. So I don't watch the TV show. I don't really, um, you know, is I that don't still really going? Care. I believe it is. Really, it's it's been on for a while then. I mean, yeah, I, I think they're starting to like stretch it out now, where they do a new season like every two years or something like that. But I don't know. But I'm pretty sure it's still on, and yeah. I think they're probably up to like season eight or nine or something like that. So yeah, it's, it's kind of one of those. It's like Bigfoot Hunters. It's mm-hmm. like Hunt for the Skinwalker. Right. It's like yep. or Skinwalker. Whatever is that the Skinwalker Ranch show? Uh, I don't uh, know. But my wife is obsessed with that. Yeah, but they're all kind of the same, and yeah. it's like uh, the, the Oak Island and the Skinwalker Show. I'm pretty sure from the same production company, even. So it's just kind of like it's that... very people love them. They're great. They're really popular shows, but uh, it's just like you can kind of clearly tell they're entertainment or something because it's like you never you never get you always just get yeah. a little like you always like get a little bit closer, but it doesn't quite pan out, and then the episode ends. Like you know Is what I mean? It's... At least someone on there that demands he gets called a ridiculous nickname like dragon <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> they call me panther <laughs> yeah so that was my visit to oak island it was uh yeah it was cool it was a cool uh really cool experience like i said i hadn't thought of in a long long time i think i watched that like maybe first couple episodes and it just it lost me. I, I like the the lore and everything behind it. I like the like I looked into the science and and stuff about that pit, and how it can never be, you know, excavated, and how there's supposed to be something underneath there, but we'll never know because it just the way that the the geology of of that island is just keeps getting filled up with water uh, right, because of right. the the water line and everything. Um, not very interesting stuff, man. Uh, let's see. Now that's I. Tim, I think that's it, man. All right. Wow. Jake, okay. you, you got anything? No, but this has been a sick interview. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. No, nah, man, sure. I, I really do appreciate you. Uh, you want to go ahead and uh, tell everybody where they can uh, listen? Yeah. Or- I feel like I did the whole plug thing earlier, but I'll do a, a quick one now. But all do America, B I N N A L L of America. Dot com or just punch in Benal, B-I-N-N-A-L-L of America on Google or whatever. You'll find my stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Coast to Coast AM is the, obviously the Coast to Coast website. It's coast, T-O, coast, A-M, dot com. You can find all my articles there under articles. Uh, they all have my byline on them and everything. Um, be sure to check those out because I said, like I said, uh, really trying to get into the really weird, obscure stuff. Uh, over there and it's fun because i like because i'll post something then like two or three days later i'll see it pop up at like four other news sites i go to <laughs> for weird news and i'm like yeah. oh i wonder where you found that malaysian banshee story there <laughs> fucking weird news central like how'd you, <laughs> i just stumbled upon that that's crazy story that fucking is only available in in malaysian language that you might have to you know run through google translate to figure out and everything but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, check it out. Coast to coast am.com. Ben All of America is the podcast. Uh, Strange Realities Conference is the party down in Nashville. And those are the three big things. So check them out. Sweet. Sweet, man. Thank keep you guys binge- for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Oh, for sure. It. Yeah, I'm going to keep yeah, binge- listening to your stuff. It was fun chatting with you. <laughs> that's awesome. Hell yeah. All right. Well, that's been another episode of the Infinite Rabbit Hole podcast. Uh, until next time, travelers, we'll see you on the next fork in the path of the Infinite Rabbit Hole. Take it easy. Bye.